Hello and welcome to day 199 of our daily Bible reading. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Jesus, thank you for the gift of your word. Show us how to look for you in every passage that we read today. Amen. We begin today in the book of 1 Chronicles, reading chapter 26, verse 12, through chapter 27, verse 34. These divisions of the gatekeepers, corresponding to their leaders, had duties, just as their kindred did, ministering in the house of the Lord, and they cast lots by ancestral houses, small and great alike, for their gates. The lot for the east fell to Shilamiah. They cast lots also for his son Zechariah a prudent counselor, and his lot came out for the north. Obed-Edom's came out for the south, and to his sons was allotted the storehouse. For Shepham and Hosea it came out for the west, at the gate of Shalaketh, on the ascending road. Guard corresponded to guard. On the east there were six Levites each day, on the north four each day, on the south four each day, as well as two and two at the storehouse. And for the colonnade on the west, there were four at the road and two at the colonnade. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers among the Korahites and the sons of Merari, the treasurers, officers, and judges. And of the Levites, Ahijah had charge of the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries of the dedicated gifts. The sons of Laden, the sons of the Gershonites belonging to Laden, the heads of families belonging to Laden, the Gershonite, Jehiali. The sons of Jehiali, Zetham, and his brother Joel were in charge of the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Of the Amramites, the Izharites, the Hebronites, and the Uzzielites, Shebuel, son of Gershom, son of Moses, was chief officer in charge of the treasuries. His brothers from Eliezer were his son Rehabiah, his son Jeshea, his son Joram, his son Zikri, and his son Shilamoth. This Shilamoth and his brothers were in charge of all the treasuries of the dedicated gifts that King David and the heads of families and the officers of the thousands and the hundreds and the commanders of the army had dedicated. From spoil won in battles, they dedicated gifts for the maintenance of the house of the Lord. Also all that Samuel, the seer, and Saul, son of Kish, and Abner, son of Ner, and Joab, son of Zariah, had dedicated. All dedicated gifts were in the care of Shilamoth and his brothers. Of the Izharites, Chenaniah and his sons were appointed to outside duties for Israel as officers and judges. Of the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his brothers, 1,700 men of ability, had the oversight of Israel west of the Jordan for all the work of the Lord and for the service of the king. Of the Hebronites, Urijah was chief of the Hebronites. In the fortieth year of David's reign, search was made of whatever genealogy or family and men of great ability among them were found at Jazer in Gilead. King David appointed him and his brothers, 2,700 men of ability, heads of families, to have the oversight of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of the Manassites for everything pertaining to God and for the affairs of the king. Chapter 27, The Military Divisions This is the list of the people of Israel, the heads of families, the commanders of the thousands and the hundreds, and their officers who served the king in all matters concerning the divisions that came and went, month after month throughout the year, each division numbering 24,000. Jeshobiam, the son of Zabdiel, was in charge of the first division in the first month. In his division were 24,000. He was a descendant of Perez and was chief of all the commanders of the army for the first month. Dodai, the Ohohite, was in charge of the division of the second month. Mikloth was the chief officer of his division. In his division were 24,000. The third commander for the third month was Benaiah, son of the chief priest of Jehoiada, 
in his division were twenty-four thousand. This is the Benea, who was a mighty man of the thirty, and in command of the thirty. His son, Amizabad, was in charge of his division. Asahel, brother of Joab, was fourth, for the fourth month, and his son Zebediah after him. In his division were twenty-four thousand. The fifth commander, the fifth for the fifth month, was Shamhuth, the Israelite. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Sixth for the sixth month was Ira, son of Ikash, the Tekoite. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Seventh for the seventh month was Helez, the Pelonite of the Ephraimites. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Eighth for the eighth month was Sibachai, the Hushathite of the Zerahites. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Ninth for the ninth month was Abiezer of Anathoth, a Benjaminite. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Tenth for the tenth month was Meharai of Natopha of the Zerahites. In his division were twenty-four thousand. Eleventh for the eleventh month was Benaiah of Pirathon of the Ephraimites, in his division were twenty-four thousand. Twelfth for the twelfth month was Heldai, the Netophathite of Othniel, in his division were twenty-four thousand. Leaders of the Tribes Over the tribes of Israel, for the Reubenites, Eliezer, son of Zikri, was chief officer. For the Simeonites, Sephatiah, son of Maacah. For Levi, Hashabiah, son of Kemuel, for Aaron, Zadok, for Judah, Elihu, one of David's brothers, for Issachar, Omri, son of Michael, for Zebulun, Ishmael, son of Obadiah, for Nephtali, Jeremoth, son of Azrael, for the Ephraimites, Hoshea, son of Azaziah, for the half tribe of Manasseh, Joel, son of Padaiah, for the half tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Ido, son of Zechariah, for Benjamin, Jaaseel, son of Abner, for Dan, Azarel, son of Jeroham. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. David did not count those below twenty years of age, for the Lord had promised to make Israel as numerous as the stars of heaven. Joab, son of Zeruai, began to count them, but did not finish, Yet wrath came upon Israel for this, and the number was not entered into the account of the annals of King David. Other Civic Officials Over the king's treasuries was Azmavath, son of Adiel. Over the treasuries in the country, in the cities, in the villages, and in the towers was Jonathan, son of Uzziah. Over those who did the work of the field, filling the soil, was Ezra, son of Chelub. Over the vineyards was Shimei the Ramathite. Over the produce of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zabdi the Shifmite. Over the olive and sycamore trees in the Shephila was Baal Hanan the Gedorite. Over the stores of oil was Joash. Over the herds that pastured in Sharon was Shitri the Sharonite. Over the herds in the valleys was Shaphat son of Adlai. Over the camels was Obil, the Ishmaelite. Over the donkeys was Jediah, the Maranathite. Over the flocks was Jazez, the Hagrite. All these were stewards of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, being a man of understanding and a scribe. Jehiel, son of Hakmoni, attended the king's sons. Ahithophel was the king's counselor, and Hushai, the archite, was the king's friend. After Ahithophel came Jehoiada, son of Benaiah, and Abiathar. Joab was commander of the king's army. Romans chapter 4, verse 13 through chapter 5, verse 5. God's promise realized through faith. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, 
neither is there transgression. For this reason the promise depends on faith, in order that it may rest on grace, so that it may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, and the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Chapter 5. Results of Justification Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be paid in full. Well, this has been the Word of God and the Word of Life. Thanks be to God, and we'll see you tomorrow.